Are you wondering if DNA can help you find your family? Are you trying to figure out what DNA tests that would be the right test to take? How accurate are they? What can you do with DNA that can really benefit you in your family history research? Well, I have Diane Southerd here, and I am so grateful to have her because she is the DNA expert. Thank you so much. Yes, thanks. Thanks so much for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here and talk to your people. Oh, great. Thank you. Okay, so tell me a little bit more. And by the way, her website is DNA Guide. You can go there for more information about some of the things that we're going to talk about today because she's got some great tutorials there and things that you can um, sign up for that will give you a lot of really great ideas. So that's a place that you might want to go. But let's talk first about, can DNA really help you in your family history research? How does that work? Well, it can, but it really depends on your goal, right? I mean, if you're looking for your 10 times great grandparents, uh, DNA can be useful in some ways, but not as useful as if you're looking for your great grandparents. So for, um, for DNA testing, I usually tell people, if you're looking for your three times great grandparent or closer, then autosomal DNA can absolutely help you, no matter what your question is. And if you're looking for someone, say, four or five or six times great-grandparent, there's Y-DNA testing that traces just that direct male line, and that can be really useful. There's also mitochondrial DNA, which traces the direct maternal line, which can be useful in certain situations. Right. So when you ask, you know, can it be useful, most of the time the answer is a resounding yes. Well, a lot of people are kind of worried if you haven't taken a DNA test before, they're kind of like, what about privacy? What are some of the risks? I hear some people talk about, ooh, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, definitely. So it's just like any other place where you're putting your personal information. You know, it's your bank, it's your cell phone, you know, anywhere where you're carrying personal information, you want to be sure you're A, you know who you're giving it to, right? Who is this company and what do they stand for and what are their policies? And, and that's all find outable right? Yeah. In general, our main DNA testing companies that you hear about with genetic genealogy, so that's going to be Family Tree DNA, MyHeritage DNA, Ancestry DNA, even 23andMe, and then there's another company called Living DNA. These companies are all built to help you do genealogy. That's their goal. And so in general, they need to have permission to run the test. So when you take the test, they're going to ask you, is it okay if we do this? And you're like, um, yeah, that's why I paid you, <laughs> right? Okay. But there's always a second consent. And the second consent is usually about research. Do you want your DNA involved in the research of the company? And so sometimes you might be like, mm, no, I just want you to do the test and I want to be done, yeah. right? Yeah. And so it's just important to understand those two different, you don't have to agree to both. You have to agree to the first one, but not to the second one. And so that's a way to kind of keep your DNA out of a more mainstream research pool and that can help protect your privacy. Um, additionally, the DNA testing companies don't require you to use any of your own personal information. You can literally put Minnie Mouse on your DNA test kit and they don't care, That's like they're not really double checking, point. right? Yeah. And so if you're feeling a little bit concerned, um, use your initials maybe, um, or use a fake name even, like that's not, it's not gonna affect your results, it's not going to affect the, the results that they're able to give you. One of the other things that I hear a lot is how accurate are the DNA tests, and not only in their matching, but also in the ethnicity. Yeah, so Amy, I love that you were talking those two different kinds of yes. tests because those are two very different results. Okay, so you have a match list and you have these ethnicity percentages. The match lists are very accurate, meaning that they are measuring the amount of DNA that you share with someone and that amount of DNA can then be translated into a relationship. Okay, but the problem is when you're sharing, say, a hundred, we call it a centimorgan, when you're sharing a hundred centimorgans, there isn't one relationship that corresponds to that number. There's lots. Yeah. And so it's confusing and it makes people feel like it's not accurate when actually it's just telling you like it is. You just have to apply your own techniques. You have to apply genealogy to figure out what that relationship is. So the matching is very accurate. Now the ethnicity, on the other hand, right, ethnicity is different. And they don't purport it to be accurate. They call it an estimate for a reason, right? They're not planning on it being super like absolute. It's not supposed to be, it's just an estimate. But they're getting better and better and better at it. And they're getting better because the databases get better and because the technology gets better and the math gets better. And so I think now, you know, the results that we have now are more accurate than the results we had five years ago. And the results we have in five years will be more accurate than the results we have now. It's just the science of it. 
Well, why then do people see, I get a lot of questions about, well, my ethnicity said this, and then a year later it said that, um, and sometimes it's very confusing to people. It is very confusing. <laughs> so a lot of it has to do with, I mean, you think about modern day, let's just use, for example, Germany. Okay, so we think, oh, well, Germany is this spot on the map, right? But not very long ago, it wasn't that spot on the map. It was a little bit different shaped spot on the map, right? right. And so a big idea that you need to think about with ethnicity is timing. Like, it tells you you were 27% German. Well, when? When were you 27% German? How long ago? And a lot of these results are talking about your ancestors 2,000 years ago. I don't have my genealogy 2,000 years ago. So it's it's really this combination of, of what you already know and you're trying to merge that with what they're telling you and things don't quite line up. And it's a lot about timing. That's a really good point. Thank you for sharing that. And I hope that really clears things up for a lot of people because I honestly get these questions all the time. Okay. Well, I would like to thank you so much for doing this with me and for clearing up some of these things. Please don't be afraid to take a DNA test. And then once you do, there's lots of different resources to help you figure out what to do with the results of your DNA test. As a matter of fact, I have this video that will tell you a little bit more about how to analyze those matches and how to color code them and figure out how they in fact are related to you, which ones are related to which line. So check out that video. And again, thank you so much. Have a great day. Great. Thank you very much. Good luck.